Welcome, dear friends, to the service for Sunday the 13th of October, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. And I pray that we will all be blessed as we share in this time together. be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worthless. Pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading comes from Job, chapter 23, verses 1 to 9 and 16 to 17. Then Job replied, Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him. If only I could go to his dwelling. I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would find out what he would answer me, and consider what he would say to me. Would he vigorously oppose me? No, he would not press charges against me. There the upright can establish their innocence before him, and there I would be delivered forever from my judge. But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. In 16 to 17, God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. Yet I am not silenced by the darkness, by the thick darkness that covers my face. Hear the word of the Lord. Our appointed psalm for today is Psalm 22, verses 1 to 15. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry to you by day, but you do not answer, and by night also I take no rest. But you continue holy. You that are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and they were saved. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. 
But as for me, I am a worm and no man, the scorn of men and despised by the people. All those that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips at me and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But you are he that took me out of the womb, that brought me to lie at peace on my mother's breast. On you have I been cast since my birth. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. O go not from me, for trouble is hard at hand, and there is none to help. Many oxen surround me, fat bulls of Bashan closing in on every side. They gape wide their mouths at me, like lions that roar and rend. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is like melting wax. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue clings to my gums. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading this morning is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, reading verses 12 to 16. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 10 beginning to read at the 17th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honour your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, then come. Follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied. 
No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields, and with them persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There was once a man who loved gold. Then he inherited a fortune. With a sense of great joy, he redecorated his bedroom. He put gold wallpaper up. He hung yellow curtains. And he had a golden-colored rug and a yellow bedspread. He even bought some yellow pajamas when he was feeling especially good. But then he got sick and came down with, of all things, yellow jaundice. His wife called the doctor, who made a house call, and the doctor went up to his bedroom and stayed up there for quite a while. When he came down, the wife asked, How is he? I don't know, said the doctor. I couldn't find him. Indeed, many people today are absolutely absorbed in and lost in a world of greed and materialism. Today's gospel is about a man who was owned by his wealth. He came to Jesus, but he returned to his wealth. He let the spark of life flicker and burn, but he didn't let Jesus take that light under his protection, and so the wind blew, the light went out, and he went home sad. How frightening it is to be on the verge of getting what you've always wanted. It seems like when a dream is finally about to come true, we begin to wonder, is this really what I wanted? It also seems like this is the time when other things start looking even better and we become afraid of making a commitment. In my view, the reason these things happen is that we are afraid of losing the illusion of freedom. The illusion of freedom is very different from real freedom, because in real freedom there are real limitations. The greatest ballet dancers in the world do not achieve great freedom by dreaming about dancing. No, they become great dancers by making a commitment to their art and then by following through on that commitment. They learn to exclude many things that other people take for granted and do all the time. They learn to focus. The more they focus, the more limited their lives become, and the more limited their lives become, the more freedom they acquire in their dance routine. It is the same with the Christian life. It means putting into practice what we believe and being less afraid of making mistakes than we are of doing nothing. It means practicing justice with as much fervor as we seek to develop a personal and communal relationship with Jesus Christ. The real test of our talents, our dreams, our faith and our character is in the doing and not in the wanting or in the imagining. Sadly, though, many have found that it is easier to dream than to go after a dream and take risks. And there are many who choose not to accept 
Christ's invitation to follow him out of fear. Fear that they will lose their friends. Fear that they will become a fanatic. Fear that they are not good enough. Fear of persecution. Once there was a boy who wanted to be a great cricket player, but he hardly ever got to play. When he was sent into the game, he played with a tremendous amount of desire, but every time he batted and missed, he would get furious at himself. He was so busy being angry with himself for his mistakes that he seldom if ever, let himself play the game. There was another child who had decided at some point in his young life that he was not going to worry about criticism. He didn't care how many times he batted and missed because he knew that the more shots he took, the better his chances were that some of them would connect. And they did. This young man was focusing on the game and not his mistakes. He let the coach deal with his mistakes. One thing that can be said for the first young man was that he took the risk of showing up and being on the team. He puts his dreams to the test, but he was unable to forgive himself for his mistakes, and so he seldom really enjoyed the fact that he was on the team. Many Christians are like this boy. They are so busy looking at their own sins and mistakes that they seldom, if ever, let themselves enjoy the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And the other boy was a bit like the disciples who were happy to be on the team on the Lord's team, even if they made many mistakes along the way. If you never go after the dream, you never risk losing it, and you can always have it. But then, it's just a dream. The real desire, the one that frightens us and challenges us the most, is to make our dreams come true. As dreams alone, they don't qualify really to satisfy us because there is a hunger inside of us that is never quite fed, never quite satisfied if we don't make a commitment. This is what is happening to the young man in today's Gospel. He imagines that he wants to inherit eternal life and he becomes excited when Jesus refers to some of the commandments because, in his mind, he has already done all those things. We can imagine that he is thinking, I'm almost there. He already has in his possession all the world has to offer, and now he imagines that he is on the verge of having it all wealth and success in this world and in the world to come. But then Jesus drops the bomb. Jesus tells him that he can't have it all. He will have to choose this world or the next. To attain eternal life, he will have to give up what he values most of all in this world. And then he will be free to seek eternal life and follow Jesus. To follow Jesus is to follow the one who says, My kingdom is not of this world, and I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. This rich young man discovered what many people discover when the real Jesus reaches out his hand and says, Come, follow me. They feel the tug, the pull, of all the things that they love more than him. The idea of following Jesus fills them with a warm sense 
a comforting sense of joy and the possibility, perhaps even a sense of nostalgia, for when they were little children, they heard stories about Jesus, the patriarchs and the matriarchs. But the real Jesus, reaching out to them and saying, Come follow me, is something else altogether. To follow Jesus is to die to oneself, meaning to put oneself last or not at all, and to be reborn in him. This seems unfair. It seems unfair if people are looking at what they must leave behind rather than looking at the riches they will gain if only they will take his hand. The disciples were filled with despair when they saw the way Jesus had just spoken to and treated the rich young man. They cried out in exasperation. Then who can be saved? Jesus had just made an impossible demand, one that was far more demanding than the law and the prophets. According to the law, a rich person was entitled to his riches if he shared a certain percentage of his wealth, his fields and grain with the poor. The book of Amos tells of the consequences for not meeting this requirement. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. And now Jesus is saying, much more is required of you. He is saying instead, I want all of you, and you cannot serve two masters at the same time. The rich young man and the disciples are filled with despair and sadness because they are looking into themselves and they can see that they are incapable of letting go. It is not just in them. Even though the disciples try to cover up their despair and uncertainty by saying, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Their uncertainty shows when they ask, Then who can be saved? The voice of the disciples is the voice of our own hearts as we come to that precipice, to that place of decision and look out at Jesus. Instead of seeing him and putting our trust in him, we see the great difference that stands between us. We feel like Peter when he began to sink in the ocean after walking so happily a few steps in the water. The young man did not confess his inability to Jesus, did he? He didn't say, Lord, I can't do it. Help me. Had he been willing to confess his sin as well as his inability to give his possessions to the poor, the Lord might have said to him instead to of to his disciples, For you it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Come follow me. This is something we all need to keep in mind. When Jesus asks the impossible of us, he is willing to take the impossible part upon himself, and he is asking of us only what is possible. The disciples were far from perfect when Jesus called them, but with the love of Jesus burning in their hearts, they stumbled and bumbled along on their way to eternal life. There are many in today's world who believe that they can inherit eternal life by some other path, an easier or more fashionable path, or following some other philosophy of life. 
For some, the decision not to follow Jesus is a matter of intellectual pride. They believe that they are too intelligent to believe in the Christian faith, to believe in Jesus Christ. There are those, too, who have read a little bit of history and they have become embarrassed by the injustices that have been practiced by sinners within the church at times throughout history. They do not want to be associated with such things. Still, others simply do not like the Christians they have met and they see nothing attractive in that way of life. But all these people, no matter how good their intentions might be, no matter how well they may know themselves, no matter how intelligent or deluded they are, all of them will one day have to come face to face with Jesus Christ. And if they have denied him before others, if they have rejected the faith that he has offered to them, he will reject them before his heavenly Father. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He does not seek perfection, but he does not ask of us to come and follow him, to trust him and to put our faith in him rather than in ourselves. He invites us to let go of all those things that are holding us back, that are keeping us from taking that great leap of faith. Are you at the precipice today? Are you sensing that Jesus Christ is calling you to follow him in ways that you have never followed him before? What is holding you back? What do you love more than him? All those things that hold you back may be stronger than you, but what is not possible for you is possible for him. Only in him will you begin to find true freedom. We often get so caught up in pursuing our careers, dreams, or whatever, that we fail to see the trouble we are in spiritually until it is too late. A man told his priest, I'll deal with Jesus later. I'm just not ready right now. But I know that the Bible teaches that whenever we come to him, he will forgive us our sins. The priest looked at him and, taking his time, said, But the Bible doesn't promise you that you will live until tomorrow. Let us follow him while there is still time. Amen. Let us pray to our God, who is always ready to hear us, bringing him our concerns and longings for the world, the church, and for ourselves. Heavenly Father, Guide the Church to be faithful in keeping the commandments and avoiding the temptations of outward success and power. As we enjoy the freedom to worship you in faith, we ask that you keep safe all those who worship in fear of persecution or imprisonment. Fill them with hope and dignity as they faithfully serve you, and may we stand alongside them. We pray for this diocese, for Bishop Dan and for the leadership. May they be faithful in their calling to serve you and your people. We also pray for all who are seeking God and for the nurturing process in this parish. We pray for opportunities to share God's love in the wider community of White River. May all who look to us in need in our church and community find welcome, healing love and acceptance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for all who lack freedom and suffer through injustice, for all who are denied basic human needs. In a world where there is so much conflict and unrest and the innocent suffer, we pray for leaders who seek God and fight for goodness, truth and equality for all.
We pray especially at this time for the many areas experiencing war and conflict. We pray for protection and peace, for de-escalation and ceasefire, for humanitarian aid and medical teams, for generosity and for compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you are the creator of all things, and you continually sustain the life of the universe and all that is within it. We thank you that you have called us to share in the work of caring for what you have made. Forgive us for the damage we have done to the earth, for the pollution of rivers and seas, for impure air, for the extinction of wild animals, flowers and fauna. Forgive us that we have often valued profit more than quality of the environment. And as we pray for our world, we pray for those areas affected by severe weather conditions such as floods, droughts, storms, fires and more. Guide community leaders, government officials and aid workers as they work to restore order and provide relief. We trust that you will bring good out of even the most difficult of situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all who are afraid to give and afraid to share, for all who have amassed wealth but are poor in spirit, for all who are suffering through the greed of others and denied basic human needs. We pray for the poor of the world, for people and nations in debt, for those whose lives are a daily struggle to survive. We pray for our own Jesus Cares project in this parish and for all those that seek help. We thank you for all who have made sacrifices for others, for all who have enriched people's lives by their goodness, for all who have been generous and gracious to those in need. Teach us to be generous and willing to give. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of healing, we bring before you all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray for the disillusioned and depressed who find the complexities of life too difficult to bear. For those living with chronic illness or facing a new frightening diagnosis. For those in constant pain. For those on waiting lists for treatment. And for the many in our parish who are frail. May the skills and knowledge of those who care for the sick be fully used to help and to heal. May all who are ill know the reality of your loving presence amongst them and help us to remember to give you thanks for our own health and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we give thanks for those who have passed through this earthly life and are now with you in glory. We especially give you thanks for the lives of Linda Lillo and Angela Blandon, who are now at rest. We pray for those saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, whether recently or as they mark an anniversary. Give to them the comfort which no one else can give, and let them know the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we leave this place and go out into the world, we go with open hearts, ready to receive life that is rich in love, joy and spiritual fulfilment. May the depth of spiritual connection bring meaning and purpose to our daily lives as we share the love of Jesus with all whom we go to meet. Merciful Father, accept these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Your grace frees 
We come now to the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you 
a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. When the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, 
with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, broken for us. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for us. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us now and always. Amen. So dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.